So good morning. I see we have a slightly smaller crowd than Nick's famous Apache Waste talk. Uh, this is about managing Apache project brands. So this is very specific to how we do it at Apache um, it, with the experience of the past 10 years, really the past two or three years when we've had enough projects that have a big enough brand that really need thought of how we treat the brands of our products. So I am Shane Kirkrew. I'm the Vice President of Brand Management for the Apache Software Foundation. So I'm a legal officer of the corporation, which is important later on. Uh, this is a volunteer position uh, appointed by the Board of Directors, although I actually re report to the president at the ASF. So I don't know if Nick had a, an org chart of the ASF, but that's another interesting little side thing that is, uh, we can go into later. So my responsibility uh, for the past two years is to define the brand and trademark use policy for all Apache projects and podlings. So this is a requirement for all projects to um, meet basic brand requirements so that we can defend the brands on behalf of the projects, which usually is not an issue, but when it does become an issue, it's very important to do it right. So we have a uh, questions to trademarks at apache.org. This is a privately archived mailing list that only members are allowed onto because when we're discussing legal issues, which trademarks often get into, you can't necessarily have those in public. Um, while we might want to, anytime we ask the lawyers about it, they all start shaking and we say, okay, we'll, we'll do it privately, thank you. And I personally am not a lawyer. I a, came as a software developer and then a volunteer here at Apache. So, but the experience of this position has taught me that I could play one on the internet. So stay tuned for my upcoming TV show. And I posted the slides um, online here and in SlideShare. So what are we gonna talk about today? We'll do a brief overview of what trademarks are. So this isn't, this isn't a talk about branding and marketing and how to get people. This is a talk about the logistics of trademarks. And we have to understand what they are before we can have an intelligent conversation because the understanding varies widely, especially with engineers. The bulk is how do we manage our brands? How do we deal with trademark use and make sure we do it right? Well, there's really three parts that I think are important for people here, most of whom are working on an Apache project, what PMCs need to do themselves. And we have some education and this talk is, is part of the education that we have for PMCs so they can understand. There are a number of things that you really need to do together with trademarks. That's with me and a number of other Apache members on our private mailing lists to say, okay, is this okay? Did, can we do this permission? Can we change this? Um, and there are some things that you have to let me and the trademark list do on your behalf uh, for legal reasons, for efficiency reasons. There are a few things we have to do for you, which, which is a good thing, trust me. We're talking about how Apache does things. How can, the other side is how can your company who uses Apache projects or consults or trains, how can you respectfully use Apache brands? So you can get value out of it, but that the projects, the communities who built the software get the credit they deserve. So that's an important part and some resources. So if we look around the room now, if you look at your fellow people, anybody who's flinching is probably a lawyer because they understand that you cannot possibly describe anything worthwhile about trademarks in 30 seconds. But we're gonna try. So what are trademarks? Um, I ended up writing, which sound very blase, but are very, I think, worthwhile. Trademarks are the legal instantiation of your brand. So we know what instantiating an object is. Well, that's what the trademark is. It's, it's the legal bit about it. It's really about pre preventing consumer confusion about the source of a particular good software product or box of tissues or computer or podium to within a specific field of commerce. So tissue boxes and computers and podiums are different fields of commerce. So they're sort of different worlds for trademarks. The trademark itself is the specific name or logo, the legal detail definition, the name or logo that somebody associates with that good. So I have a ThinkPad branded laptop. So we say I have a ThinkPad, but really it's a ThinkPad brand laptop. So the, the hard thing to, for a lot of people to understand is trademarks are not about protecting us. They're not necessarily directly to help us as Apache projects or as companies to sell our things. Trademarks fundamentally are protecting consumers so that when consumers buy a ThinkPad product, they know it comes from IBM and not from somebody else. Or, excuse me, they know it comes from Lenovo and not from somebody else. Because they expect from past history that IBM and now Lenovo 
makes a certain type of product with a certain quality. With they have certain expectations. When you hire, you know, services from IBM, you know you can just call up, and they'll send somebody to your office the next day. That's part of the brand of IBM. So trademarks pr pr protect you when you're looking for a service or product that you know you're getting it from IBM and not from somebody else. <coughs> so that's you really have to change how you think when you get into the details of trademarks. It's not what we think of things. It's what a new user coming to our project who wants to know, wow, I need you know, some really simple servlet container. And I've heard about Tomcat. They're looking for Tomcat. That's the trademark that associates hopefully with tomcat.apache.org and hopefully with the software product they download. So a brand, there are a lot of elements to branding and marketing, and we, other people can talk about that. It's the look and feel, the names you use, the, the tagline and the phrases and so on. For the minimal purposes we have, the trademark part of your brand is really the specific name or logo that people associate with your software product or service. So in most Apache cases, it's the software product. It's what they get when they download something. That's the primary trademark. Now, your project name, so there's the Apache Tomcat project that produces the Apache Tomcat software. Your project name is not necessarily a trademark. We can, we can say it's a service mark because when you go to the Tomcat project, you expect helpful people to answer your questions. Um, but those aren't necessarily, in our case, as strong as the product marks we have. But those details, service or product, and you clearly brand it, are important when you start to talk to trademark people. We all know what they mean, but remember, this is from the point of view of a new participant in our project, or even just a new user of a project. That's what trademarks are really about. So I'll just do this quickly because everybody hates this one. Trademarks should be adjectives, or rather, legally, trademarks are adjectives. A trademark describes the goods that you're providing for sale, or for free download in our case. So I buy Kleenex brand tissues, which is true. I prefer them myself because I expect a certain kind of tissue. We run Apache Lucene software. We also run Apache Hadoop software. Hadoop is a registered, registered trademark of the ASF. But in common usage, we all just say we run Python. That's OK. That's fine. You don't need to sprinkle little TMs and Rs and so on everywhere. But it is important to establish our use of trademarks in key places to use them as an adject adjective. So we should not say that Hadoop runs massive big data. We should say on our home page and the download page, the two really critical parts from a legal point of view, our Hadoop software runs big data. And that's an important distinction that we think is silly, but trademark lawyers get antsy about. So it's important. Much less so in other places. We don't need to worry about it beyond our main public front. So you can't do all these things with trademarks. What can you do with trademarks? Well, everybody else besides us can talk about our products. So that's called nominative use. And it's, the idea is kind of like fair use for copyright, but it, it's not legally the same. So don't, don't ever say that to a lawyer. People have to be able to, to talk about your product. Um, people even have to be able to talk about your Hadoop build because the latest Hadoop build really sucks at performance and it's so slow. Here, let me show you this chart of Hadoop versus so-and-so with performance. That's okay. They can say that. That's not infringing on our trademark. They're clearly talking about our product, which is what trademarks are for. So an important point is personal blogs, newspaper articles, software reviews, places like that where somebody is talking about software products. Those are almost always nominative views. And I have had a number of places where committers or PMCs come to me and say, you know, oh, but they said this about, I'm like, yeah, but they're not, they're talking about your product. They, a consumer would never confuse it for their product. It's a review. It's obviously about Apache Hadoop. So infringement, which is a serious issue, is when a third party uses your trademark in a way that could confuse a consumer where the consumer would get that particular software product, in our case, software products. So recently someone else said, so-and-so co is Hadoop. And then went on to talk about how they have this great Hadoop stuff with Nary and Apache around. That is close to infringement because, you know, I am Hadoop. If I start marketing myself that way and providing software, then people will say, hey, Shane's this great Hadoop expert. No, 
I might be an expert about Hadoop software from Apache, but I'm not Hadoop. Hadoop can only be gotten from the Hadoop project. So it's really about how the consumer sees the perception of getting the software product. If, if you know that it's the software product over there and they're talking about something about the product, that's fine. If they, they're talking about it as if it's their product, that's not okay. So registered trademarks. Um, this is a legal detail we probably don't need to worry about. Um, uh, hopefully we won't need to worry about it because nobody will complain, but if they do, most Apache product names and rather project or product names are not registered, registered trademarks. In various jurisdictions around the world, your active use in commerce, i.e. we put up a website that's publicly available and it provides a software product for download, that shows that we're using a certain trademark to associate with a product. Um, that accrues common law trademark rights. If you do that for a while, the courts recognize you were there first, you're doing it. If you want, you can register that with various governments. It's, you know, the EU has one, the US has one, a lot of other countries have their own. It's, it's kind of a hassle. They do give extra protections in case there is a problem and somebody contests it. If you have a reg registered trademark, you can get extra damages in court. It's easier to prove it and so on. That really doesn't matter because I don't expect that we will ever get to a point where that has to matter. So um, we don't need to worry about that other than if we do have a reg registered trademark, then the standards of how you present it are more important. So the Hadoop PMC needs to be careful to use the R so that when we show, yes, we're doing it properly, we can protect it. So a lot of people have said, but it's open source, you know? So you give all your stuff away for free. We, we give away our advice for free. Sure, it is open source, but if you read almost every open source license, you will see an exclusion for trademarks. So you can do whatever you want with Apache software, essentially, um, but you can't take the name. That's really the, the only, I mean, there's a couple other things, you know, please don't sue us and so on, but really it's just, you can do anything you want as long as you don't call it Hadoop or Lucene or Tomcat. So that's enough to get started thinking about how consumers see the name and associate it with the software product. That's what trademark law is about. Um, what do PMCs need to do? So we don't need to be like Coca-Cola or Kleenex and have you know, branding teams that do everything, but we do need to respect some things and we in particular need the PMCs, we need each of your PMCs to do this kind of work for your project. Really, it's be responsible. So it, it sounds trite, but I can't think of a better way to put it. Theo was talking this morning in the keynote about you know everybody gets so excited about the code or gets so excited about their framework. Um, we need to get excited about the brand and the image that we're presenting to the world. So it's not just that we all know what it is, but you want to attract new contributors. Well, new contributors come from being new users who are interested. And new users come from knowing what your software is. So thinking about your brand and putting it out to new people, and then doing it in an appropriate way for trademarks is fairly easy. But be consistent. Have a consistent project logo. Make sure this gets on all the different pages, whether it's developer facing or end user facing. Um, consistent across your websites. Understand that how people see your brand. So even really simple things of asking people, how did you find us if they're newcomers? Or looking at our site versus another product that does the same kind of thing. You know, how would a newcomer see it? Those are important things to do. And one thing that is important for PMCs is treat the Apache name and the Apache feather respectfully because those belong to the ASF and re represent all of our projects. So consumers have a certain expectation. When there's Apache foo and they download it, they expect there will be community support behind it, and they expect that it will do what it says. So that's an, another important brand we need to, to work, about, work on. So being consistent. So you'd think we're software engineers, we're consistent about making things compile, but um, this is about consistency in the presentation on the website. So your use of your brand, your use of how the Tomcat logo appears, or how the Cassandra I appears, is the reference implement implementation. So we need to show to the world, this is our great logo, and this is the name of our product, and our product does this. Then people will understand, including trademark lawyers, that our product is this thing, 
and that's the name for it. So we need to tell the world you attribute your trademarks. You annotate them with the TM or the R, or SM for service mark if it's a service you're providing. Um, we need to ensure we're consistent, the, especially on the home page and or landing pages and the download page, because most of our trademarks are software products. So the trademark attorney will ask, show me how the world sees you, your home page, and show me how the world actually gets your product. So your download page needs to have Apache Lucene TM software here. The rest is not as important, but those front pages are important, and trademark lawyers have asked us about that. The only thing about being consistent is there's no magic rule for exactly how often you have to do it. Trademark law is not a compiler. What it really is is the, the end effect on the consumer, which you know, we can all guess at, but we never really gets decided until you go to court. But if you, if you look through your website with fresh eyes, as a consumer, you can get the effect. Does it, does this, you know, is it consistent be saying Lucene is this software product? Or do we call it different things? So we need to make sure we show ourselves properly. PMCs, as the experts for their software, need to make sure you are aware of how the rest of the world sees you and how the rest of the world talks about you. So uh, trademarks, the Trademarks Committee cannot do this. Apache, as an organization, can't help you because we don't have resources. And you're the experts. But you need to be aware of how other people use your product and talk about your product. So the, important, the one important thing that we need to address, we have to address legally, is are there third-party uses of Cassandra that might cons confuse a consumer about the true source of Cassandra software? So if you read an article and take a fresh mind and you say, wow, I'd love to get Cassandra software from Joe's company, oh, that's a problem. Those are things we need to address because if you legally, if you don't, address those issues, you can lose your trademarks. But really, those are a very small percentage of the uses, notwithstanding the many people who have said, oh, we need to you know, go fix this reference in a newspaper article. Like, no, it's a newspaper article about Cassandra software and so-and-so software and which one does a better job of row matching. Personal, again, personal blogs, newspaper sites, um, reviews, benchmarks, reports, uh, most email on all of our developer lists they're nominative use. They're not going to confuse a consumer where to get the software. They might confuse you about, is it good software or does it have bugs? But that's not important for trademarks. One thing that is critical is being fair. So we cannot give extra leeway to companies that are favorable to us, that provide lots of support. We have to be fair to all users. But that being said, you're the most experienced at knowing how people are talking about your product. So you'll know who's talking about it and the uses that might be funny. But given that, most of the uses that you might complain about probably aren't, aren't infringement. So that would be where you would work with trademarks. So we need to understand how people are talking about us, but we need to make sure we're fair when we talk about other people. So when we talk about Microsoft Windows operating system, you can say you love it, or you can say it sucks, it doesn't matter. But we need to be respectful that it's Microsoft's trademark. There's no place for a charitable organization to infringe on anyone else's trademark. So new podlings coming through the incubator have a name search process. So we need to make sure that when we accept a new name, that we're not going to have an Apache project name that is going to confuse somebody else's product. That's, that's not never fair. So we should be exe exemplars of giving credit to all the other software that we use, all the companies who have donated to us, all the whatever. That's, we shouldn't be thinking of competing with anybody else. We should be happy to give credit. So this is a little bit different from brand management, but this is a critical part um, of how Apache works. As Jim said this morning, there's no, you can't buy membership in the ASF. Membership is by merit elected members, individuals. PMCs need to act the same way. There's an article on this, which I urge everyone to read. You need to present an independent face to your project. So that affects the branding. You need to show a newcomer that you are Apache Cassandra and you're doing cool stuff for databases. And you're not 
working with this company or working with that company or doing something exclusive or you're not you know, hoping that somebody will go buy this product. You need to provide a, an independent software product that is useful on its own. You can't just provide a framework that requires plugins to work that of course come from this company. That's not, that's not providing a public good. So both showing that your project is governed independently of commercial influence and providing an independently useful product are critical parts of how Apache works. This is not as important from the branding aspect, but, but how we show the contributors to our project, perhaps, is a way that can show that. We, we should show that there are individuals contributing, not companies. So I've you know, said, okay, hi, you, you need to help do all this stuff for brand management, and you're saying, you know, geez, I didn't expect to have to have all this extra work. Well, what can trademarks do together with PMCs? So when there are issues, then Trademarks is here to help. So when we do need to police brand use, so I've, I get lots of reports of, oh, so-and-so is, is misusing our brand. What should we do? Or, oh my god, they're doing this. You have to stop them right away. Well, that doesn't actually help. Um, but yes, I will look at it. Trust me. We need to work together. And again, we have some guidelines, which I have not publicized well enough, but I'm going to work on that for all PMCs. I always work with trademarks before contacting an outside party if you think they are infringing about something. Because about half the time I'm going to say they're not actually infringing and we don't need to do anything. You could put a comment in their blog and say, hey, you know, I saw you talking about this and bad performance, but I have other stats. You can respond that way, but it's not a trademark issue. Um, there are a few PMCs who know how to do this and if you already know how to do this, then you know that. But otherwise, work with trademarks before contacting anyone outside Apache. We always contact people privately. Some people want to go post, and some people have personal blogs saying, you know, so-and-so is a bad company because they're stealing your name. Bad idea. Um, assuming ignorance rather than malice, yeah, it, it usually is that, whether it's ignorance by a marketing person or just ignorance in general. Um, if we do it in private, everybody can save face. Um, that's really important. There are a lot of cases where perhaps some you know, a corporate team might want to edge in and after we explain to them privately and if we explain to the right person that no, that's not going to work with this community, that's not how we work, they change their ways and they get it. But if you have that conversation in public, that can blow up, that can cause flames, and just having it in public can damage their reputation. Um, there actually are legal issues. If you call someone out explicitly about a trademark and you're wrong, you actually can be sued. So do it in private to start with. Be professional and polite. So you don't need to wear a tie. In fact, I noticed that nobody is. That's good. Um, but we're often going to be, whoever we're contacting at some company, it's often going to get bumped up to somebody who does perhaps, at least in the Dilbert world, wear a tie. So we need to be professional. We need to be polite. We need to make sure that they understand we know what we're talking about. This indeed is our valid trademark. We own it. We can show you how. And that um, we need to be specific. Because you can't just say, I don't like how you're talking about Cassandra. That, that doesn't help them. What you need to say is, this use of Cassandra on your giant banner that is now on your web page that's right next to your software company logo that not, doesn't talk about Apache that could confuse consumers. Somebody who doesn't know that much, but knows they want Cassandra or some, they'll say, oh, they'll go to that company for Cassandra. So you need to point out the specific issues. And usually pointing out a couple of, a couple of the specific details that trademarks legally could be used to enforce will help to get to the conversation of, we'd like it if you were you know, better presented us. Um, the great majority of infringing cases or potentially infringing cases, let me be clear, are resolved by discussion privately. Uh, and legal threats are never the first step. So I actually have had a couple of times people sending me an email saying, oh, okay, well, should we send them a C&D letter now? Uh, no. So speaking of legal issues, we need to coordinate legal advice. If there is a legal question, um, I, I didn't see anybody flinching earlier, um, so I don't think we have any lawyers here, which means 
nobody here can give legal advice. Don't do it. We have pro bono corporate representation for Apache, officially signed with waivers and so on. Both the Software Freedom Law Council provides general support, and DLA Piper, which is a major international IP law firm, both provide lawyers for us. So when we need it, we can ask them questions. If you do get legal questions, or if you do get questions from some VP or CEO that sounds a little bit you know, out of the, the average technical realm, then get help <coughs> trying to answer them. Trademarks is a private list for anything about brands or trademarks. Uh, Legal-internal is a privately archived list where the Legal Affairs Committee reads. So if a project has a legal question, like you need to incorporate a new piece of code with a different license, you have a reason to do that. You need that to say, is this OK? Go to Legal Internal. We also have a publicly dis archived list called Legal Discuss. That is for general discussions about legal ideas. You can ask your questions there. You might not get an answer, because lawyers are reticent to give answers for hypothetical questions. So um, never give legal advice, and never give explicit permissions or um, exemptions for trademark use without talking to trademarks. So some people say, oh, sure, you can use that logo on your t-shirt for the next event. Well, yeah, did you really think about the trademark implications? Because maybe they're actually going to be selling that t-shirt, or maybe they're going to be using it for the next two years. So you can't, projects are not empowered to give away trademark rights. Only, in this case, I or the president are. So we're happy to work with you. And if that makes sense for your project, sure, that's fine. But we need to work with PMCs to judge that fairly. So what should you not try doing, and what will I do, or other officers of the ASF do for you? So first, the reason we're having this is we set policy for all Apache projects. This is not the core trademark policy is not optional. This is a requirement for projects. And if projects don't answer to me, then I'm confident that they will either answer to Jim, who's here in the room, or they'll answer the board, who is more than happy to talk to them. But beyond the minimums of respecting the details of trademarks, how you do your brand, that's up to you. That just like code is strictly for PMCs to run, what your brand is, how you promote it, that's up to you. I do not want to have any, any say for, for that. But I am happy to help, much like press at Apache or Infra is here if you need other servers or if you want to do a press release. The ASF is here to serve the projects. And the, the brand guidelines are just a better way that we're doing that because many of our projects are uh, quite important brands in the world. So this is the primary uh, workflow, unfortunately, for trademarks is when we send someone a private note saying, hey, you know, you're not really doing this right. We suggest you use, separate the logos or put Apache over it, whatever. When they say no, or when they have a lawyer write back to us, then trademarks should be the one writing back. So as much as Apache, we're in our own world um, of high-performing individuals collaborating openly. When we step out of that world to deal with some company who perhaps is new to Apache, um, they look at individual names and titles in particular very differently. So nobody at Apache really cares that I'm a vice president. And you know, other than the fact Jim's a really good guy, president really is not exciting, other than he gets to do a lot of extra paperwork. But when you go out to corporate companies, they pay attention. If you write, you know, so-and-so committed from this and I'm upset about this, when it gets bumped up to a lawyer or a vice president of marketing, they're going to say, yeah, whatever. When I write them a letter and I sign it with my title and I point to the policy that has my name on it, on the Apache site, they say, oh, okay, I actually need to pay attention to this. It's sad but true. The most important thing on this slide is patience. So, as I said earlier, private discussions. That, I don't want to call them negotiations because we're not going to give away trademark rights just because. But they're discussions, and we explain better ways to do things, and we explain no, it's, but this takes some time. It both takes time for me or other members who are volunteers on the list to craft re replies, and it takes time for corporations to work through perhaps their chain of command. So that's one of the hardest things I have explaining to projects is, yes, we are dealing with this thing. I know you go to the website every day, and it looks horrible because they're saying whatever about your project, your baby. But we need to have patience. 
And through this, legal threats are never the second step. So at this point, I'm, you know, and I hate this, I'm not a con controversy person, I don't like conflict. But I'm writing back to people saying, no, I'm sorry, that's not okay. We need to work through this. I'm not thinking about legal threats. I'm just talking with them. Well, what if we do have to have legal threats? Well, a cease and desist letter, which is a legal form of the sort of first shot across the bow, is not the next step. Um, it's not a good idea. Even though you might be offended or it might be a true um, infringement on our product name in a specific area, think of the public image of a nonprofit attacking someone else for the name. So we need to be careful about the public image of any legal or other you know, actions we might take um, because we need to be careful always to keep you know, sort of the, the public thought of upper hand of a, 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 you know, a do good charity. Trademark litigation is expensive and risky. Um, there are a couple of lawyers I've talked with who have said, you know, you know, if this ever happened, what would we do? And they just laughed at me. They said, you won't. Like, okay. Uh, most issues can be resolved with discussion. So that may require having Jim talk to them. It may require finding the right person at their company. It may require setting up a meeting with the CEO and with ASF counsel. And when the lawyer's on the phone, then people usually think about their words a little bit differently. A few very serious issues, if, if these kind of things do not resolve it to our satisfaction, uh, to our at least trademark legal satisfaction, then we have other organizational ways to deal with this. So the ASF is an organization. We have an org chart, even though it's really flat. It's PMC's report to the board, right? Well, that means if we need to, the board can make changes within PMCs. And in fact, in the past, the board has done so. So uh, if needed, we can make a public case. So there are cases where sometimes the public case is the right thing to do, where very carefully note, hey, so-and-so is pushing back on our brand. They aren't really contributors. It's really our project. Here's why. And I can't think of many companies that if we put that out as an official statement of the ASF, basically calling them out, that they wouldn't at least notice. So, so speaking of companies, how can your companies respect open source brands? Or in picture, particular, Apache brands. Because the Apache brand, not just your projects, but the Apache brand is an important brand. It's very important to the ASF. And it is clear from the number of new projects in the incubator that it is an important one both for users and for technical people who want to contribute. So I always want to make slides that are really, really simple and then I end up adding all sorts of other details. But really, it's the community's brand, not yours. So if you are a company that uses our software, contributes to our software, services, training, whatever, it's our, our brand, it's our trademark, it is not yours, and you should treat it as such. Imagine that we are Microsoft. When you do want to use a brand, or when you do want to sponsor a conference or whatever, ask first. We're happy to work with you. The key point is give us plenty of lead time. We're all volunteers here, and there are very few of us who are volunteers on trademarks. So make sure you give us plenty of time to review it before your marketing person wants to go out. Speaking of marketing people, ensure that your marketing department understands your company's strategic goals. I cannot count on my fingers and toes the number of times when we have had an issue with a company that has been some moderately serious and that it all comes down once the right people have been talked to that yes, the company gets it, the CEO gets it, the engineers get it. I mean, there's some awesome engineers who are like, how can I help Apache? And the marketing department has gone off rogue. And after it's explained to them by the CEO, it's all fine. But marketing departments can do that sometimes, apparently. So. And the only note is the ASF Apache is here for all of its project communities. So don't think that just because it's some small Apache project that it's not going to get love. It will. So you need to create your own brand. I mean, if you're a company, you should have your own marketing thought and so on. So create your brand because this is our brand. This is the community's brand. It's not yours. So talking about 
ways to, you want to get some benefit because you're building something on top of Hadoop. So big co super thing, powered by Apache Hadoop. That's probably okay. It clearly separates the two things. It says Apache Hadoop, which is a big indicator to most people that the Hadoop comes from Apache. That we're happy to do because there are so many of our products that are server-based things that get added onto. But all the other ideas, any, anything that takes Hadoop or Apache Foo, the Foo, and puts it next to your name, no. Those are clearly infringing and we will not tolerate them. So some PMCs uh, have extra logos, like a Powered By logo. There's the Powered By HTTPD logo, which is ancient, but out there a lot. Um, if PMCs want to do that, that's great, and we'll help them. But uh, if the PMC doesn't provide that, then assume that you need to treat it as a completely separate brand, if you're a corporation. So uh, a great thing is give credit, credit to the community. So hopefully, people running these corporations are thinking they're competing with the rest of the corporate world. They're not competing with the Apache project. If you think you're competing with the Apache project, then I'm sorry, I can't help you. But being liberal with praise and attribution and giving credit to Apache Food Project, um, you know, build this great stuff, and then we built amazing stuff on top of it. That should be an easy thing for corporations to do and is a great way to, from the Apache's point of view, if you are marketing your thing, part of your marketing includes a link back to ours, that brings potential users to us, but more importantly, potential contributors to our projects. So that's critical for our projects, and that's something that should be easy for corporations to do while they're also trumpeting their own horn, of course. Uh, because the most important asset to our communities are our contributors. So we want to make sure that the, the people who build our projects get the credit. So that's part of what branding at Apache should be about, is making sure our communities get credit. And whatever you want to do with it, that's fine, but know that the, the first thing of Lucene was built by these people here. So uh, thank you and resources and questions. So uh, I always like to end with a thank you. Um, obviously, basically a thank you to everybody in this room and everybody at the conference for contributing to Apache, both code and documentation, especially documentation, and organization, and whatever it is. Uh, thanks to our pro bono council, SFLC and DLA Piper. Um, and thank you for coming and listening to my talk. So we have, um, I can answer any questions. Uh, if you do have questions via email, please send them to the trademarks list so that everybody else on that list can see it and we can get back to you in an appropriate way. Uh, so we have one in the back. Good. Um, I've always felt that there's, there's a lot more mystery to trademarks and, and branding policies and fashion and the you know, what we see and, and what's there and the documentation on the website. Uh, I wanted to specifically solicit your comments on um, why there is a specific uh, um, departure from, from usually what applies to most projects uh, when it comes to incubating projects. Um, okay, so the question is, why, why, why are incubating projects treated differently branding-wise than top-level projects? Um, because, I mean, the core answer is because they're not Apache projects yet. So while they are an incubator, we provide them a home, the ASF does not stand behind them as an, ex as an example of what we expect projects to be. So that's the fundamental reason. The realistic reason is they've just come into the incubator, they already have their own way of doing things, and we understand that you know you need time to change. So from the branding perspective, at the minimum, I'm happy for them to do whatever they want as long as they include incubating because we, for the Apache brand, that's important to understand this is not necessarily an Apache project yet. But we want as long as before graduation that they comply with the Apache branding policies and any trademarks with that project are being donated to the ASF. So top level projects, the ASF must have the trademark rights to the name, the logo, whatever. Um, which usually is simply the, the company or individuals who are donating it, they want to come here. So it's, it's very clear. But for example, if there's a registered trademark, we have to have the registration. We, you know, the ASF holds trademarks on behalf of all projects. Um, but you're right, the, there isn't enough documentation and some of it is you can't 
understand the rationale for some of the documentation without a few bits of trademark background. So, and the other comment I will note is there are parts of how we implement trademark policy that are not on the public web pages because uh, there are some companies who think of this as a competition and will try to find ways around the policy to maximize their gain at everyone else's um, detriment. So that's not a, a wild thought. I actually have had someone specifically come to me saying, can I see your documentation because I'm going to find a way around it. So that's rare. That, that's not common. But that's, that's also part of why we do all enforcement privately. So if you want to say to me, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen if so and such and such company tries to usurp our brand? And I am not going to discuss what we will do because those are legal issues and we don't discuss those in public. So is that a question over here? Yes. Um, when we're, we're, I, my name's Mark. I work with uh, Citrix and the Apache Cloudstack. Yay, Cloudstack! <laughs> Cloudstack does a great job with trademarks. Mm -hmm. And when they want to do the events after they've talked to the PPMC or in our case PPMC or hopefully PMC someday, do you want them to go to CONCOM to get permission for their events and trademarks or just CONCOM? If um, PMC signs off on that. For, for the time being, just CONCOM. We, okay. we, we can discuss that later with Nick. But events are are very specific. It's, it, there are different ways you think of seeing branding an event, whether it's on the slides or whatever, than other uses. So CONCOM is the right place for that. Okay, cool. So that was, the question was about uh, if, if projects have somebody who wants to run events about their project and you know, a company wants to use the logo, then ask CONCOM for permissions. And we actually have a detailed, if you'd like to run an event, here are the things you must do. Once you do them, come and ask us. So, OK. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. And if you have any more questions, maybe you can go up. Yeah, I'll be here all week. I'll be wearing a Hawaiian shirt the rest of the week, so it should be easy to find me. Thank you. Thanks.